Hey everyone, this is my last little video in working with file system INI files. So basically saving and loading up uh, from the file system in a very simple format, the INI files. And I love this example. Lots of people always ask in the class how to do this one. It's basically almost like a level editor. It's great for saving games and it definitely shows you, you know, what you can do with your lists and maps and file saving. So check this out. I've positioned uh, some objects in the room here different types, different locations. I can hit save. Don't worry about that. And if I delete them all, uh, do some other stuff, and then, oh, I need that back. Bam, it loads up from the file, grabs the right object types and their positions. And this is all done in a very nice, easy, convenient way. So this obviously has a lot of uses and you can apply this idea to a lot of different things in your game when it comes to file saving, right? and working with data. So let's go check out how this is done with the INI files. So I have my save and load button and just to show you here when I click the button for save it's calling save food locations and the same things happening on load it's calling load food locations and so let's just go take a look at save food locations and what's going on. Now this looks like a lot of code because I have some comments in there but really that's not too much. So the first thing I do here is I want to find out how many food items I have in the room. And I guess it's worth it just to point out. I've made my food object a parent to burger. Has food as a parent. Apple has food as a parent. And pear has food as a parent. That way I can attack all these things just by talking about food, right? They're all considered foods. So I find out how many food objects or instances are in the room. And now my next idea is, is I'm going to use a grid data structure. So you've seen our video where we use lists. You've seen the video where we used the map. Now I'm going to use a grid with the file system. Now the grid is nice. You basically give it a width and a height. And here's going to be my logic. Column zero is going to store the object index. So that's like when you say object apple, it doesn't actually remember the word object apple. Remember, that's actually a number to game maker. Like it could be the number 17, right? Or 28. So I'm remembering the number which relates to that type of object. Then I remember its X position and its Y position, and that would make up row zero. And then the next row, same thing, right? Column zero has the index of the type of the object the X and the Y position. And so this thing keeps filling. If you had 100 items in the room, you're going to have row 0 to row 99. And you'll always just have column 0, 1, and 2, right? Type of object, X position, Y position. All right, let's check this thing out and see us filling it up. So first thing I'm going to do is to make this efficient for me, um, I'm going to save the data of the objects into a grid structure. So I make a grid with DS grid create. Width three, height num. Remember I asked how many objects I had, right? So I know how high to make it. Now I start my loop. I'm gonna go from row zero to almost the number of objects, right? So if I had 100 objects, num is 100, K will go less than 100, so it'll go up to 99, which is perfect, right? Row 0 all the way up to row 99. And check out what I'm going to do. I'm going to use instance find to grab that particular food item. So I grab, you know, the first loop, K0. I grab food 0. I have its ID. Now remember, if you're not familiar with these commands here, instance find, these are ones we've talked about earlier on in the course, right? So... You should go find the videos on that one and, and refresh if this is all a mystery to you. Now that I have the ID to that particular food object, I can grab what type of object it is by its object index. That's a built-in game maker variable. And remember what this tells that if it's an O apple, then object index will be whatever that number is. So if that's object uh, 17, right? So I'm going to have the type you know, is maybe 17. If it's a burger, maybe that's 25. If it's a pear, maybe that's 57, right? It's a mystery what it is, right? But it'll definitely be a number that we have to remember. 
then I remember the X position of that food and I remember the Y position of that food. Now that I've got those three variables, I'm going to set their value inside my grid. So I say, hey, DS grid set in this grid called grid. That's the grid I made. In widthwise, right, the X position. So in column zero, row K. And remember, I'm currently my first row would be K equals zero. So in zero, zero, plug in the type. Now that is this, zero, zero, right? So that's that one. And then I say in one comma zero, put the X position and in two comma zero, put the Y position. So it's basically doing this in one comma zero X position in two comma zero, put the Y position. So you can see here, I filled the first row up and then the loop comes back up. K goes to one. It grabs food number one, does the same thing in row one. Then it comes back. It's two grab food two, does the same thing and it fills row two up. So eventually my grid is all full, right? Once this grid is full, we do something we've done in the previous two videos, which is we take that grid and we run it through DS grid right. It basically takes that whole grid structure, no matter how big and full it is, and it codes it into one ginormous string. And that ginormous string I mean, it's not going to look very big for my example here, but you'll see I have, uh, let's pop into the file. That's how big mine was for just a couple of those foods, right, that you saw on the screen. So that's the entire grid structure converted to a string. And basically, it takes that string. Come on. Whoops. I think I just messed up. Okay, I made it back safely here. So it takes that entire string that I just converted the grid to. I just show the message for fun there. I destroy the grid because I actually don't need it anymore. What I really need is this string, right? That has the whole grid in it. And then I do my basic I and I file work. I open the file up. Now I should technically have their working directory. And I write a string, section food, the key value, food info, and the data, grid as string, and then I close the file. And like we said, the end result is that, right? Food, food info, and the data, okay? It's tucked away in there. Now, obviously, when I go to do the load, the load is going to be very similar. All I'm going to do is I'm basically going to do the opposite. I'm going to open the INI file. And I'm going to load it into a grid, then go through that grid with a for loop and make all my things again. So let's go check that out. Load food locations. So in load food locations, let's just do the whole reverse thing. I open up the INI &I file. Okay, food INI. -I. I read a string value, the food info out of it. You've seen this before with the default value of NA. So if there's nothing in there or can't find this, I'm going to get NA back. So if grid of string ends up being NA, the default value, I know something went wrong. I'm just going to quickly handle it there and you know leave this script. But otherwise, I know I have this giant string that represents a grid. So I make a grid. You can actually just make the grid one by one. It's totally fine because as soon as you use this command, DS grid read, you give it a grid. That's the grid I just made. You give it that big string, which is a whole bunch of rows and columns that have the locations of my objects. False means don't worry about being compatible with older versions of Game Maker. And basically, it dumps the string and reforms it into a proper grid, into that grid we just gave it. So now my grid is all full, and it won't be one by one anymore. It'll be whatever size this data says the grid should be. Now that we have our grid filled back up in reverse, now we basically have to create the food and position it from the grid. So let's go for this here. Uh, this is a great one. I do my number here, which will tell me how many rows are in the grid, right? DS grid height. Give it the grid. It tells you back the number of rows in this grid. Okay, basically the maximum Y value. 
shouldn't say the maximum y value. It's the number of rows, right? And remember, rows start count at zero. So we'll let our loop go up to just under that value. So, you know, if we have 100 items, k will go less than 100, which means 99 will be the last one it tries to do, which is perfect. Matches the grid. And basically, I get the values out of the grid row by row. So starting on k equals 0, I say ds grid get from this grid, get me x position 0, which is like column. So column 0, row 0. And that's the type, because I know that's what I'd put in there. That was the uh, ID of the instance, right? So if it's an apple, that's a number. If it's a burger, that's a special number for burger. I've got the type in there. And then I do the same thing. I go to column 1, row 0. I get the X position. I go to column 2, row 0, and I pull out the Y position. So this is exactly the opposite of putting the data into the grid. Once I have those three things, very easy to do. Instance create at X, Y, and that type of object. So remember, I didn't have to say O Apple there, or O Burger, or O Pear. That number that I grabbed out is the object index, right? The special number for that object that GameMaker is remembering. So it's going to work. The only caution here is don't change. I should say don't change objects after this is done. Uh, this warning is basically this. Let's say you have been saving data or you make a level editor or you save some level and object numbers. If you go and delete, let's say, the Apple object out of your game and then you remake it because you tried to make it even better, when it remakes it, it's actually going to give it a new number. And so that number that you're storing here in uh, column 0, uh, the, the numbers, they're all going to be different. So if the Apple object used to be, let's say, ID 20, it could pop out that now it's object ID 150. So you got to be careful with this system, right? Is just make sure that uh, you understand that consistency okay, has to exist. And basically, I make the object. The loop goes back. K is 1. Now it's going to be doing row 1, 1, 1. You know, it repeats. When we're all done, you don't need that grid anymore delete the grid to clean up memory. And that's really it. That's your grid. I love this one because when you actually see it working, it's like one of those uh, moments where the clouds part. But basically you can click, click, move your objects around, right? Do whatever. Give it a save. That's the map. Or sorry, that's the grid, right? If I delete everything, load it up again, loads them all up beautifully. Okay, so you can really apply this to a lot of situations. And definitely... Even if you don't want to save object locations, this idea that you're saving stuff into a grid, because this grid really gives you a lot of flexibility, right? You can have lots of columns, lots of rows, means lots of data in a nice organized way for you, and so simple to save, right? Just convert it to a string and dump it into the file with one line. Beautiful. Love it. See you next time. Hope that uh, gives you some ideas, helps you out. Oh, and remember, these projects are all on the website.